I feel like I just got an education, right? <laughs> it was so exhaustively researched. How and why were you so dedicated to making this particular project? Good question. Um, well, you know, uh, as you know from my resume, I've done a lot of true crime, so I've always been fascinated by the Bolger case, um, but never thought I would make a film about it because at least in our country, there's been a glut of media about this case. Over a dozen books have been written, there have been other TV shows. Uh, there are two feature films that have been long in development that are finally coming to fruition. Uh, one with Johnny Depp playing Whitey Bulger and one with Matt Damon playing Whitey Bulger, another project. Um, and so I thought I had nothing to add um, until I heard he was actually arrested because as a longtime follower of the case, I believe that the FBI had given him a free pass and he was never going to be caught. But clearly a new generation of FBI people came in and said enough's enough and we're going to catch him and they did and it didn't take for They ran a new commercial and three days later he was caught. So, you know, there was a whole section of the film that we took out because at Sundance people thought the film was too long which kind of went into how the FBI dragged its feet. Uh, in trying to bring him to justice. Um, but I, uh, when, when I heard he was actually arrested, I was surprised, and so my ears started to perk up as a potential, you know, mm, this sounds interesting. And then when it was announced that he was actually being brought back to Boston for this trial, which promised to be, you know, the biggest legal proceeding in Massachusetts since the famous Sacco and Vanzetti trial, I don't know if you guys know that one, in, uh, in the 1920s, uh, you know, I thought that, okay, here's an opportunity for me to do what I do, um, which is to dissect the man from the myth, because not only had there been so much media about him, I can't think of another contemporary uh, criminal in the last 50, 60 years who has been so mythologized uh, and that we really don't know what the story is. And there have been allegations of corruption, but never really adequately explained. You know, the conventional wisdom is that he was an FBI informant and that there was a rogue agent, John Connolly, that let him run amok, but that never, that never made sense to me, that one low-level FBI agent and his superior, his immediate superior could have been the ones responsible for all this murder and mayhem. It's, it's illogical because the FBI, like any law enforcement agency, is a almost a paramilitary organization where there's a chain of command. And it just didn't square with me that Connolly, you know, Connolly's a bad guy, but I, I think he's been scapegoated. So the opportunity for him to come to see like this. Hello? <laughs> The conspiracy continues. Oh, what's going on? Nothing. Oh my God. Um, They're on to us. Oh shit. Um, I lost my train of thought. There. The idea that John Connolly was oh, a one man. No, show. so I so I thought that actually him actually coming to trial uh, was an opportunity to separate the man from the myth, and I actually thought the trial was going to be an expose of a lot of this, a lot of these questions of corruption. But as the trial unfolded, and even pre-trial motions, the, you know, the very first thing the judge did um, was to exclude his ability to bring up, to talk about his immunity claims and to limit certain witnesses. And that was a bad sign to me because it meant that they were going to very narrowly focus this trial and not go into the court. I mean, it was so obvious that Bolger was not going to walk away from this. And so I felt there was a responsibility to the victims' families and a responsibility to the citizens of Massachusetts uh, to allow the trial to go into much deeper levels of inquiry. And that, that did not happen. And so that kind of gave, well, you know, I didn't know that starting the film, but once I was into that and realized the trial was going to be so narrowly defined, to me that gave, informed the film to me as to what the mission is, which was to air some of these questions that are very troubling. And, you know, look, the film, some people have misunderstood this because they're, they're 
if they know my work, you know, a lot of my previous films have been about bringing justice to the West Memphis Three who were wrongfully convicted, and Brothers Keeper, the first film, was about a guy who shouldn't have been brought into the legal system. Um, so this film is not about, gee, Whitey Bulger, you know, there's a miscarriage of justice here. I mean, he's a brutal killer, as Kevin Cullen says at the end of the film. He's where he should be. He got away with murder, because, you, know, you know, getting a life sentence at 83 is a bit of a joke. Um, you know, so I'm not an advocate for Bulger, but I'm an advocate for the truth. And when Carmen Ortiz, who's the U.S. Attorney for the District of Massachusetts, stands up at the end of the movie and says, um, you know, with the conviction of James Bulger, uh, this ugly chapter in Boston's history is over, how can it be over if we don't know really who's responsible and, and if all of these questions are still swirling about? If he was an informant, and he was allowed to kill, and allowed to do all these things um, in service of this greater goal of bringing down the Mafia, well that's bad enough and we need to know more about it. And if he was not an informant, which the defense presents some very credible evidence to me, but which was not allowed to be brought out by and large in court, like his immunity claims, which explains why he wasn't arrested as opposed to the informants thing. If that's true, then the conspiracy is much deeper, much more pernicious, and we need to know answers. So I forgot what your question was, but there you go. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, I think the two cases obviously are unrelated other than it was the same person, but you know, I think that office has some deep, deep problems. Uh, definitely, and has historically. Um, and I think this was the opportunity to kind of clear the air with the Bulger case, and I think they failed terribly. On the other hand, the two prosecutors in the movie, um, Wyshak and Kelly, I actually like, and they're good guys, by and large. They are the ones who fought against inst the, the institutional resistance to indict these guys 20 years ago. They came in as new guys and said, this is ridiculous, and pushed for these indictments that led to the FBI tipping Bulger off and then he went out on the lam. But I think at the trial, 20 years later, and they fought for 20 years to bring Bulger to trial, I think they, you know, you can't serve two masters. I mean, they were, they were now serving the very institution that they were fighting against, and I think the government interest in narrowing the scope of the trial was somewhat in conflict with, with you know, what they would have done had they, you know, worked for themselves, you know, which obviously is not possible, but I think they were, you know, conflicted, and I actually think they're not bad guys who are in the film. Um, what was the, oh, so CNN started a new division last year to produce long-form documentaries like HBO. This was my first project with them, and they produced the film. They funded it and produced it. Of two brothers starting out in those, you know, impoverished uh, housing projects. One rises to be the, you know, biggest underworld boss, and the other rises to the, you know, president of the Massachusetts Senate. You know, probably the most powerful politician uh, in Boston. And we definitely gave a lot of consideration to including that uh, in the film. Uh, but A, they, that, that strand of the family did not want to cooperate and had no interest in being filmed. And secondly, because the story was so vast and complex that I just decided to you know, use the trial itself as the springboard and to focus on those things that were being discussed at the trial as kind of my guiding principle. And that kind of fell outside of it. Uh, there's a brief mention of it at the beginning because those who know this story, I don't want them to say, well, why didn't you include the Bulger brother? So I, we just threw it in there for a little context because um, I felt like it had to be mentioned. Um, but it's, you know, that's a fascinating part of the story.